so in today's video we are going to add a user to our Microsoft Office 365 this is the first time I'm trying I'm gonna log in after adding the custom domain uh, my own domain uh, if you haven't watched that video you can go back and watch that video so we're gonna see what is the username does it stay the same or it has changed I am oh well, I'm already in there so actually I'm already in there and it looks like my username is still the same I can go and edit it out if I want uh, can I no so let me uh, go with the enhance session over here <coughs> so <coughs> this takes time okay all right so let's make it a little bit bigger so we don't have to scroll everything is in front of us so you see this one was the old domain then we added this one domain today we want to go to um, user and add a user so we can click on users and then we can click on active user and we see this uh, user is the active one and we can reset the password from here but but we want to either use add multiple user or add a user so if I click add multiple user I think it's gonna ask me oh yes so you can either use the comma separated file CSV or <coughs> add a user so I'm gonna use just a single user uh, I'm gonna add uh, let's say um, I have to pick any name okay so we can pick any name uh, I'm gonna put uh, Ali um, I can leave last name just like that display name Ali and username is Ali I can let's put everything lowercase so you see that uh, I have two options either I can use my own domain or the one that Microsoft gave me I'm gonna go with my one it says auto generated password like it will generate the password for us or let me create the password <coughs> the next thing is require this user to change their password when they first sign in if you have watched my videos from the <coughs> uh, one where I was setting up that um, active directory and DHC uh, sorry uh, the server uh, the when we are creating users in our active directory on the local server uh, 2019 uh, in this machine right here uh, if you remember from there that uh, we had this option as well so we're gonna uncheck it because we don't want the user to change um, um, their pa password like we want to uh, in a lab environment we want to we I want to have control over what password I created because it's not different user but in real world you want to keep this one here so they can change to something that is easier for them to remember and this one is send password in email upon completion that I think is with this like once they complete sign up they get the email but I'm gonna go with my password so I'm gonna give it uh, uh, whatever I get uh, uh, for the <coughs> uh, right so I, I can again click it so they receive the password only when they complete the sign up process but uh, I'm not checking it because I don't have a, I don't want to go in the hassle of creating email IDs and then checking them up so I can leave it like this S select the location I am in United States so I'm leaving it here as is if you're in another country you can select your country from here assign user or product license so I have you see I have the business premium I have about 24 license remaining I can assign this user a license so they can go and install it on whatever device they have or they can log into this um, office uh, products uh, and use it <coughs> so we or the second option is that you create a user, still create a user but not assign them a license key what will that do is that they uh, 
it, the ID is there. It's just they are not able to log in and use the Office 365 until we assign them a product. And the, uh, the Office 365 model is that uh, you get charged by the user and it's not a fixed price uh, or thing like the many users you have activated over there that's how much you are charged and if somebody leave the mid-year you add uh, uh, delete their account or disable their account and then you are not paying for that user all right so we're gonna assign it for the sake of uh, learning so it says apps 22 if we see so <clears throat> show apps so these are all the apps that this user is going to have access to see if for example i i do not want him to go into form use the forms or bookings or any other app for sharepoint or yammer whatever so i can uncheck it and that user this user will not have access to them but i'm going to leave it everything as default this is the most important one this one is that is a, just a user all we want them to do is just uh, uh, use the office and not be have any kind of administrative role this one the second one is admin central access basically we can put him a user admin for example we have we're five uh, team of five Ali I want him to be help with uh, some of the uh, um, managing user workload so I can make him user admin so he will not be able to manage all of these but if he has to, if we uh, have to add a user remove a user disable a user or change password all he can do it because he has this right if i enable it but i'm not enabling him for this or any of these because uh, he's just a user i'm making him user the reason i'm not making him any of that is because i have a few admin in my active directory in my server here that is installed locally so in the next video when i'm going to transfer everyone over there i'm going to give the same users who are here as uh, admins i'm going to have them access the same admin on the active directory as well uh, on the uh, 365 active directory that that is azure if uh, right there so basically local directory is active directory or for microsoft users just just like the users and we have to create or delete and all that so for the web the cloud microsoft uses azure active directory so i'm gonna make it uh, as much as streamlined that whoever the user admin here it's at uh, is the admin on my office 365 as well but i just wanted to show you so he is a user and he has no admin center access so when he logs in he does not see all of this stuff the next one is collaboration i am not sure he will be able to because he has to have a admin for example as soon he is admin center access then everything is available so since he is not admin uh, so since he is not admin you see down there everything kind of grays out the third one is devices like what devices he has access to nothing global identity so all these options are related to being an admin we can go and minimize it and minimize this as well so we are left with the last one that is the profile info so for the profile what his job profile let's suppose that he is the um supervisor soup his department is it his office is let's say he works in hq we can add office phone number his phone number his office line his fax number mobile phone his address uh, not his home address obviously the address of that office location for example a, a company i had worked prior to this one they had like uh, location all over the world so uh, if you go through their directory uh, they were not using this one they, they had their own directory 
so you can actually see where this person is working so if you follow a chain who is the who's boss and all that up up the chain you will see that this okay this person is working in columbus but his boss is in texas the other one um texas was the uh, usa uh, headquarters and then they then there was the uh, regional headquarter and then the global headquarter was in paris france so that's how uh, you can do that so that's uh, is able linkable because of this information now we don't want to add any more information we can click you want you can but i didn't i don't so you see this is basically a kind of summary it says his settings is this he, this is his uh, name this is the login information the password is custom he has a license for this and his his role is just a user we can finish adding so Ali has been added the new user will now appear in your list of active users so before we had just me now if we go back and see it's right showing here but if we go there on that screen will she see him as a template so basically if we want we can save this as a, a template for example I can say all the regular IT guys oh or maybe just regular user so so basically what this doing is that anybody that they want to create a user let me put IT in here as well in the name So if I want to quickly create a user that works in the IT department <clears throat> I can come and use the template <clears throat> and that way I don't have to fill out all the information that the the <clears throat> um, of office, office 365 will know that this user works in IT department he does not have access to admin center or any of those ones <clears throat> or for certain if I had given him access to something then uh, uh, those settings will be applied to the uh, uh, other account that I use through this template so everything will replicate I can click save <coughs> templates <coughs> so it's saved I can either go and add another user or I can close it I've closed it that's so good <coughs> all right so now we see that uh, I have the user here so since we talked about Active Directory and we want to connect our local users to our Active Directory, let's go and see if this user shows up in Active Directory or not. Azure Active Directory. It's loading. I think it's part of uh, my subscription because I see my name there. So it's automatically updated or uploaded. Like it's synced up together I'm gonna click users right here I was looking for it I see all user and my both of us are here and the source is Azure Active Directory because we created all of them on the off from the office 365 so this is how you use the office 365 admin center to add a user or more we saw the CSV file method that you have the file and you can upload everything uh, uh, with a one click or we can use one by one and for future we can use the template if this video has helped you in any way please like rate comment and subscribe thank you for watching and I see you in the next fun stuff video which is about uh, we're gonna connect our local Active Directory migrate all the users or more like copy them to our office 365 all right thank you and you have a good night